Namaste, Dr. Ramya. Welcome to India's Daughters. Thank Namaste. You Thank you for joining us. So just to give you and the online audience a little bit introduction about India's Daughters. So we started this page like a few years back uh, with the intention of highlighting the work done by Indian women. Uh, so recently we have started a series of talks where we are inviting some speakers to speak about the work that they are doing and uh, specifically women oriented, women and children oriented also that is something which are like planning to do in the near future. Uh, yeah, so that is basically the objective of this page and uh, if, I don't know if you had got a chance, but if you and the online audience, if they go to the video section, uh, they can see some of the talks that we have uh, done in the recent past. So that is a bit about uh, ourselves, but uh, to introduce you today's speaker, first of all, thank you. And for the online audience who's joined us, I just want to read out a little bit of introduction of Dr. Renia Krishnan. She is Associate Professor and Head of the Department, uh, Department of Dravya Guna Vijan, Rajiv Gandhi Ayurveda Medical College, Government of Puducherry Institution. She did her VMS from Vaidratnam Ayurveda Medical College and postgraduate from Government Ayurveda College, Trivandrum. She did her PhD in the subject of dysfunctional uterine bleeding from Rajasthan Ayurveda University, Jodhpur. She has more than 21 years of clinical experience and 16 years of teaching experience. She has authored a few books and uh, I'll give it to her to speak about the books that she has written and the work that is um, she is doing. So considering today's situation uh, where health is very important, we thought we'll do this talk on women's health and Ayurveda. So uh, before I hand it over to Dr. Ramya, just a note for the audience. Uh, the audience can type in their questions online. And once Dr. Ramya has spoken, uh, we will take those questions and Dr. Ramya will answer those. So Dr. Ramya, over to you. And thank you once again for joining us. Thank you, Devika ji. It's my pleasure and privilege to join on this platform for a very noble cause of uh, this awareness program and uh, first of all i would like to thank god for this opportunity and second to the organizer uh, for calling me for this event and uh, she had given a brief introduction about me i'm an ayurveda doctor my name is dr emya krishnan and i have done my bams from trishur kerala md from government ayurveda college trivandrum and phd from rau and uh, other than that, we have done, myself and my husband, Dr. Rajkumar, we have been doing research in Ayurveda for more than 20 years, starting from, I will say, 2000. Yeah, 2000, we have started. 2001, we have started. And 2005, we have started intensely working because we were very disappointed about the conventional Ayurveda practice. Because what happens today, what we find in India today under the label Ayurveda is just prescribing medication and leaving the patient. So many medications. You must be aware of at least one time you might have taken Ayurveda consultation, I think. And when you go to an Ayurveda doctor, what you find is the prescription will be loaded by medications, different kind of kashaya, kada, churna. Arishta, Lehiya, so many medications. And sometimes Panchagarma procedures also the doctors will recommend you. If you are not getting recovered, they will ask you to come and ad get admitted. Do some Panchagarma procedures and because your disease is chronic, it is uh, unresolved for a long period. So you need Panchagarma like that. Doctors will start speaking and you will be admitted for 7 days, 14 days, 21 days, endless period. And in between, if anything aggravates, what generally what is observed is Ayurveda doctors will be referring you to some specialist or Western medicine practitioner will ask you to suppress or control it or controlling. They cannot do control. They are doing suppression. So do suppress and come back to us again with lots of hope. You will go back to Ayurveda doctor. Again, it will be fluctuating. So why this is happening? In our Ayurveda education, what I find is this. We are not finding people getting recovered fast. 
as fast like uh, when the patient is getting with an acute disease pain in the abdomen fever or something patient has to recover in two days that is what is to happen in a suddenly occurring disease but we are not seeing in our bams throughout we are finding some cases getting admitted with low back pain or some arthritis or something else like allergies autoimmune diseases but we don't find a case a single case where we find that patients are getting recovered patients are happy with minimal medication in minimal period so this made me upset this made me upset and after i got married to a very adamant disciple of ayurveda dr rajkumar we started thinking together why this is so even though we wanted to become doctors we are not able to become doctors because we are not motivated we are not educated in such a way that we can become doctors we are not meant to prescribe a doctor is meant to heal the patient right he is not meant to merely prescribe and discharge the patient so this made us do start looking inward what is wrong so we understand that ayurveda is such a vast science highly complicated highly uh, there are so many things because it is science of man it is not a tradition like how you think culture heritage ayurveda is misinterpreted as culture heritage tradition etc it is not it is a highly complicated science of man because ancient people were having more intelligence ancient scientists because they are you they were using natural intelligence not artificial intelligence and you know natural intelligence requires constant culturing so when we read out our texts which are written in sanskrit that also a foreign language to us after completing plus 1 plus 2 during our period it is pre degree whatever it be when we enter ayurveda colleges we are supposed to learn in a foreign language for me it was not foreign though i used to learn many shlokas in childhood but for many people it was different so what i mean is it has to be correctly interpreted its application has to be taught in the colleges how these principles ayurveda is not a science where this medicine that disease this disease that medicine cough this medicine fever this medicine it is not like modern medicine where compounds are given to block suppress mask alter etc different pathways and hormones in the body it advocates only those measures which are explained elaborated in detail to reverse the the cause mechanisms of the disease so these things are explained in the science but as it is a highly complicated science which requires intelligence and confidence for application and the faculties are still gravely lacking it we understand that it is the problem of human being who is using the science and not the problem of science as such so we started working for certain developing certain methodologies where every bams qualified practitioner can understand a patient better understand the what is happening in his body because today's patients they are having multiple problems not like one problem suppose a patient is coming for infective fever she might be having allergy she might be having history of thyroid she might be having diabetes or proneness to diabetes whatever it be so we have to connect everything connect that is called a holistic science a holistic science has innate principles which can which enables the physician to connect multiple problems inside the same individual and apply the right principle to reverse the multiple problem when we apply the right principle it will be working on multiple targets in the body at the same time and all the it is like one shot all the things will have to resolve it's not like masking blocking suppressing symptoms it is not signs and symptoms it's not like that for that we have to understand the principles of science in the real sense so we had a very amazing great legendary guru vaidyabhushanam raghavan tirumulpad in kerala sir was teaching students unfortunately i was not blessed to be a direct disciple of him but though i was learning his publications but later i started putting immense effort to understand science through my husband also who is also an adamant disciple of ayurveda so together we have worked and we were able to reach certain standardizing methodologies really worth to apply in every patient so that 
we can reverse we can understand the diseases acute and chronic in a sharp manner it is not like trial and error method today what is happening in ayurveda is trial and error with based on experiences blind intuitions beliefs my teacher is doing this so i will do this medicine i will do this treatment i have heard that that faculty was telling about it so i will do it i have seen once in my patient it was working so i will do in this patient such kind of beliefs based on that doctors are still prescribing but this is wrong we should have a standardized method based on the logics explained in the science so for developing that we have put in lot of effort we were enjoying doing our research and we have developed a methodology called sbeba science based evidence based ayurveda we have defined it and we have also developed methods to understand every sort of disease today like infective diseases there are inflammatory diseases hormonal dysfunction diabetes and many other things metabolic errors dyslipidemia cholesterol then coming to gynec so many different can be infections are there and uh, gestational diabetes is there and many other things uh, cancer is there so many different problems are there so all these things we have started exploring from 2000 i will say about our first publication in 2012 2012 it is evidence based ayurveda my publication evidence based ayurveda and rational prescribing after that my husband wrote a book unveiling the truths in ayurveda these are all scientific publications where a little bit access is possible for common man but our main purpose was to expose the science of ayurveda to educate the people i mean educate the people professionals of our community first see if we want to prove something we can prove it only through our professionals and ourselves we have to practice what we have research and we have to show the results that is very important if one doctor is prescribing 10 medicines and he is sweating not able to make results i have to take up the same patient i have to reverse the disease in one week and show see this is what i am doing if you learn and do this you will be also able to do like me it is not like don't copy me it's not you are not able to copy me you have to learn the science you have to apply the techniques there are certain standardized techniques logics these logics and techniques are published in our publications and of course regarding science there are so many confusions today people are researchers are misinterpreting data as science so many different problems see this drug has got this much benefits this much risk so it is approved as drug so it is not the case of ayurveda ayurveda is a deterministic science our ancient scientists didn't ask us to make benefits and risk they asked us to produce intended effects see why you are doing treatment why a patient is seeking treatment not to get more benefit and less risk do you go to a doctor and tell doctor please give me more benefit and less risk if you tell that also your doctor is not able to do that because all the drugs are having benefits and risk so a drug is becoming a medicine when you are judiciously able to use it and this is what is significantly lacking in ayurvedic system of medicine so we are able to do that with the grace of god and that became a revolution now we have been training doctors ayurveda doctors in different parts of india all states many states i will not say all but many states of india and there are successfully practicing scientific practitioners of ayurveda who practice science based evidence based ayurveda at least a couple of doctors are there who are adopting rational methods and techniques so this is our work and after that i have written a book in gynecology also ayurvedic gynecology and maternity care uh, devised and updated then i also mission of science in medicine for open to common man the mission of science what is the objective of science in medicine that also i have published and recently i have published a book in technical book in my subject dravya guna skills for clinical prescribing so these are my publications and coming to the women centered healthcare so i will say in every family the woman is the central axis of the family if the woman is made educated if the woman is educated about the healthcare 
if the woman is given provided self realization about the healthcare strategies which are crucial then the whole family will become healthy no doubt in that so if women are educated the whole because the entire family is depending on the woman in indian indian culture i mean mainly because in foreign countries it is like every person will come and cook and go there for their own food they nobody enquires everyone's matters but in indian culture we have a very precious culture we and values so women in the family will consider everybody's health everybody's well being so i will say it is easy and better to make the woman self realized about what is good and what is bad in healthcare this is the first point so with this realization necessity to re make induce self realization i am coming to this points so as uh, coming to women's healthcare the most predominant cause of death in women is you will be wondering it is only heart attack number one cause of women death is heart attack heart attack is the major cause so heart attack as such is not happening in young age because of the protection of estrogen there is a hormone called estrogen which is stimulating the metabolism in the body metabolism more means there will not be abnormal accumulation of uh, fats or sugars or whatever it is metabolic waste also will not get uh, accumulated if the metabolism is good internal drainage will be also good so but as the age advances metabolism becomes slow and what happens eventually is estrogen deficiency will also happen so naturally as metabolism get weakened this atherosclerosis accumulation of fat inside the arteries can happen and it can cause the aggregation of platelets leading to formation of blood clots and recently now we are seeing many cases of even youngsters young girls are also dying by heart attack that for different reason as we know myocarditis is caused by the toxins in many artificial drugs and vaccines so that is a different issue but apart from that generally during menopause before menopause starting from 40s after 50 60 the chance of heart attack were more but nowadays it begins at 30s also why it is happening i have told and for women chest pain shortness of breath all this can happen by anemia also see heart attack symptoms means it need not be always chest pain sometimes in women it can happen as uh, what you call mere shortness of breath while climbing stairs it can happen or even at rest it can happen even with the slightest exertion it can happen so women will never think that they are going to get a heart attack uh, frankly most of the women think that heart attack is meant to be happen for men it's not like that it can happen for women so this breathing difficulty shortness in breath is one important sign and weakness in arm arm weakness especially left arm weakness you are not able, abrupt all of a sudden it is happening so this demands this demands that your metabolism even if it is not heart attack you must understand that when you get up in the morning you are not feeling fresh you are getting up in the morning early most of the times to finish the job many of you will be going for work so you may need to finish all the tasks before going so when you get up in the morning you are not feeling fresh for many days it is mandatory that you must ensure whether you are drinking enough boiled water if you are not drinking enough boiled water is very important because ro water it's not a matter of purity alone ro water is slowing down metabolism according to the scientific evidence in ayurveda unboiled water will slow down metabolism boiled water is stimulating metabolism no matter it is hot or cold you should not refrigerate it in room temperature you can drink boiled water and this very measure simple measure itself will make lot of changes in your health in your metabolic status so that is number one second you have to consider take doing some physical activity morning and evening physical activity it should be like i am doing all the jobs in the home it is not physical activity exercise should be done in empty stomach then only it deserves to be called as exercise if you are doing exercise 
after food it is again increasing the workload of your heart you should never be doing exercise after food always when exercise you are doing it should be done in empty stomach and the best exercise for women up to 6, 65 70 years is stair climbing exercise stair climbing if you do if you want to do zumba it is fine whole body movement exercise is fine but postural exercises will not cause stimulate metabolism as easy as these body moving exercises either you can dance you can do zumba you can stair, do stair climbing you can play badminton it should be done for 15 minutes morning and 10 minutes evening at least minimum that is fine no need to do for one hour and all no matter you are you doing yoga pranayama whatever else you should be doing this exercise 15 minutes morning and 10 minutes evening to ensure that you have a good metabolism and good oxygenation to your cells see when you move your body only oxygen supply oxygen is needed for all your tissues right from top to bottom so when you are moving around uh, as exercise it it will increase the oxygen movement to all your cells and it will also enhance the assimilation of your nutrients that is another point you may be loading with so much iron calcium supplements i'll be coming to that later so still you may be having osteoporosis osteoarthritis so many different problems this is happening because of sometimes inflammation sometimes metabolic error all these things can impair the assimilation of your nutrients no matter you are not like a robot whatever is given inputs are given robot will start moving you are not like that it's a human body as i told you human body is a highly complicated machine you cannot imagine what all multiple processes are happening so when you simply dump in nutrients it is not necessary that you stay healthy for that metabolism and internal drainage not just bowel movement internal drainage the waste from the waste and toxins from the cells must reach the excretory organs you know your liver has got a main detoxifying and excretory function and your sweat pores urine stool everything is there so but internal drainage from cells to these kidney liver etc movement should be proper so these things happen when metabolism is fine so that is one thing and you can regulate your bp you can regulate your cholesterol you can regulate your blood sugar you can prevent heart attack by doing these two measures ensure that you are drinking boiled water you do exercise 15 minutes morning and 10 minutes evening that is one and stroke is also very common today now vascular stroke is happening and all of a sudden facial dropping can happen and sometimes your mouth can go to one side abruptly it can happen by hemorrhage or it can happen by ischemia lack of blood supply to brain just like heart attack if it happens in the brain it is called stroke so these are also by the same reason it can happen even it can happen by viral infection bell's palsy can happen facial paralysis can happen by uh, viral infection post viral uh, virus can affect your nerves and it can cause so all these can be reversed by proper management of infection all these things are happening because of improper management of inflammation improper management of metabolic defect improper management of circulation and internal drainage these things can be taken care of by science based evidence based ayurveda strategies so we are doing the practice of science based evidence based ayurveda where we are teaching we are educating more than medicating we are educating patients you do this you practice this scientific nutrition ayurveda strictly educates scientific nutrition schedule in accordance to people's health conditions it's not like every diabetic patient should be taking these foods it's not like that general scientific schedule is there and specific to patient scientific nutrition we are advising for a certain period and we are reversing lot of cases of type 2 diabetes dyslipidemia hypertension all these things without medication we are able to make the patient reach a level where they require no kind of medications in future how is this happening this is happening because body itself is 
getting repairing all these problems i mean improper drainage improper metabolism we are giving minimal medication fragmental dosage approach is introduced for the first time in ayurveda by sbb now if you go to a conventional ayurveda practitioner you will find so many medications but in sbb we are prescribing pinches of kashayam tablet maybe you will be asked to take quarter tablet a day in divided doses you may be wondering is this ayurveda itself some patients will ask because people are advising so much kada pills capsules lehyas and we are advising just one tablet quarter to quarter tablet a day what is this so this is what science is science based medicine and medicine based practice are entirely different actually ayurveda advocates the practice of science based medicine we have to use it is like mathematics when you know that this calculation is to be done you need only one medicine if you don't know you have to do trial and error with different and yes we don't need to do panchakarma in more than 98% of diseases panchakarma is unnecessary and most of the times undesirable also but unfortunately people are getting so much erroneous panchakarma procedures vamana virechana nasya all these things even hair loss people are advised nasya all these are very dangerous because panchakarma is a very serious procedure as serious as surgery when it is done as wellness therapies when it is done as detoxification panchakarma is not detoxification you please see my uh, youtube channel where i explain why and how panchakarma is not detoxification because here if i start speaking about it it will consume more time so it is don't think that panchakarma will neutral, uh, detoxify your body it is not like that and don't resort yourself to multiple ayurveda medications and multiple procedures and third cause is diabetes diabetes can happen in any age there is type 1 diabetes which is autoimmune and type 2 diabetes which is metabolic error so both these kinds type 1 diabetes also now research is going on in sbba and we are getting some promising results some kids are able to be taken out of insulin and we are monitoring them and type 2 diabetes is very easy to be managed by science based evidence based ayurveda and diabetes can cause depression in females obesity we know that after crossing 30 35 years women are getting very sedentary in their lifestyle both extremes are there some people are very too much health conscious and they will be eating nuts fruits dairy products worrying about vitamins minerals as i told you it is not fruits vitamins mineral supplements which make you healthy what is making you healthy is your metabolism your internal drainage your circulation your oxygenation in the cells level of oxygenation in the body all this can happen when you eat a natural balanced food it is not by supplements you are able to acquire any health any extra supplements like there is a habit women are taking calcium supplements now too early i used to wonder why this calcium supplements are taken this much it can cause problems it can ca- it can get deposited in your arteries it can cause heart attack maybe perhaps you don't know if you are taking calcium supplements too much still you are getting osteoarthritis or uh, osteoporosis you may be wondering why i am taking calcium supplement i am drinking milk at night i will tell you why many women are having osteoarthritis knee joint pain there and doctors might tell you that uh, my your knee joints wear and tear has happened you should not be climbing stairs you should not be walking too much you should not be exerting no it is absolute blunder i tell you it happens only because the inflammation inflammation in your knee joints which started by taking erroneous diet inflammation is like a sudden fever it can happen by erroneous diet when your metabolism is low you can get inflammation and when you are not reversing this inflammation on time inflammation get reversed in perhaps 5 days acute knee pain will develop sudden severe knee joint pain or it can be slow pain whatever it is it will be pain in the morning inflammation inflammatory pain will be in the morning after you get up pain will be very high when you start moving around it will decrease such a kind of pain you must understand that it is inflammatory pain and when you sit for some time all well 
when you get up from your seat and make the first step sudden severe pain can happen it can happen in any part of your any joints shoulder joint or knee joint or back pain wherever it is so what your doctors what you will do is apply some oil apply some ointment or you will go and take painkillers these are all very dangerous because the pain will has the it is not the pain which is to be suppressed it is the inflammation which is to be reversed and spab a science based evidence based ayurveda has got very sharp precise scientific guidelines which can help you to come out of the situation in one to two days okay so this is what is happening so don't apply oil apply dry heat with a hot water bag or dry heated cloth you can apply dry heat you stay on uh, a diet which is devoid of all oil dairy products fruits etc for one to five days maximum and vegetarian diet eat cooked vegetables not salads so when you are and drink boiled water and stay active do walking don't do exertion but stay active don't sleep in the day time all these things are very simple to follow even without any medication you will start feeling better hour to hour and perhaps you will be out of the pain in one day for that doctors are advising painkillers you will be on painkillers ayurveda doctors will be advising multiple medications as you know how many medications and then they will ask you to admit for panchakarma all these are very stupid very stupid why because science advocates treatment for cause ayurvedic science advocates treatment only for cause and cause is inflammation inflammation can be reversed without any panchakarma inflammation can be reversed with single medicine sometimes no medicine so this is misled unfortunately i cannot blame anyone because it is because of faulty education educational system in bams which is happening for many years that this pathetic scenario is developing but now we are changing the situation slowly but steadily and maternal health issues like preconception before getting pregnant itself women must ensure that their thyroid problem is reversed most of the women are having pcos polycystic ovary it is just a hormonal dysfunction it is not like so many cysts it uh, it removes surgery drilling some women will undergo drilling procedure or laparoscopy and all there is no need to undergo such procedures there is no need of panchakarma in polycystic ovary you just need to take internal medicine it is again a metabolic imbalance caused by an hormonal dysfunction together metabolic imbalance and hormonal dysfunction because of uh, less metabolism uh, hormones are also getting disturbed so what you have to do is you have to change the pattern of living you have to incorporate exercise do good exercise and there are certain scientific nutrition schedule which we have made in sbba for that and women can come out of it easily and along with that they will lose fat weight they will stay very healthy and uh, their fertility will improve there is a hormone called anti mullerian hormone amh in pcos it will be very high but once we start this lifestyle even without any medications uh, within 3 weeks 2 weeks it will come to normal which means that even if your ultrasound is showing polycystic ovary if your amh is normal you are very much back to your normal fertility so this simple things are now getting more complicated and distorted because of ignorance so pre conception healthcare normalize your hormones before you get pregnant normalize your metabolism before you get pregnant because healthy conception only will produce healthy offspring this is very important and also do not conceive immediately after you you had some uh, surgeries like weight loss surgery or some serious surgeries for some diseases wait till your immune system because after surgery immune system will be disrupted your doctor your surgeon might have prescribed you antibiotics sometimes hormones all these things so it takes some time one month or two months to stabilize to get the things stabilized then only try for fertility i mean try for conception this is important and another common health problem which women have is urinary tract infection so as the urethra of women are shorter than the male 
so it is uh, it can cause uh, frequent uh, what you call microbial bacterial colonization in the urinary tract causing urinary infection so doctors will advise to drink more water but see water drinking as such is not a treatment water drinking helps to flush off this bacteria that's all if you drink more water you will not get urinary infection you cannot decide like that because bacteria can load there and it can cause you uti any time but in summer dehydration can cause concentration of urine and make it bacteria loading urinary tract that is another issue but whatever it is antibiotics are not the choice in ayurveda we are having sbeb is advocating very good strategies very on the point pink pointed strategies with minimal medication and medicated water for a particular period to reverse the urinary infection we are getting patients which with unresolved urinary tract infection for months my doctor my uti is not getting resolved every time i am getting infection reinfection always i am getting problem what to do like that patients are coming after multiple times antibiotic administration also so understand that we are living in a period where antibiotic resistance is happening now uh, it is not like during our childhood they are administering new generation antibiotics which are very powerful and very detrimental health hazards are there not only for antibiotics any drug is having detrimental health hazard which your doctor unfortunately may not be communicating with you it is the duty of every doctor of every system of medicine to communicate with the patient about his intentions what i am doing to you it is your right to know it do not consider doctor as god god is different doctor is different we can do only what we are learning in our science we cannot be magicians god heals doctor only treats so it is important to clarify yourself by all sort of doubts sometimes i used to wonder doctor why my i might have educated the patient crp has now your crp is 15 after some treatment from a specialist a patient might come to me and tell uh, suppose with cervicitis inflammation of cervix some infection vaginal infection and cervix infection is there she will ask doctor um, after one week of treatment her crp normal crp comes below 5 suppose after treatment my treatment it became 7 patient is asking me why doctor my crp is not under 5 after one week so when she was coming to me her crp after multiple dosages of antibiotics it was 15 that time she never cared to ask a single question to her doctor previous doctor because she used to fear him she will not ask anything doctor will say you buy this medicine buy this medicine buy this medicine take it for, and if not subside continue or new set of medicines this was what is happening and after we educate you you are asking and things are getting resolved patients will start asking questions so this is not the way patient should be asking question to every doctor they have the right to do this and if any medication especially in ayurveda nowadays doctors first of all you have to check whether the doctors are qualified itself there are many unqualified quacks who are handling with ayurveda medications and different procedures and when you resort treatment under them considering listening to your neighbor and relative story you will be really landing up in trouble so first of all make sure the doctor who treats you has uh, qualification is proper qualification is bams bams he is having or not that you have to check and afterwards if you find that multiple medications are prescribed to you multiple medications for endless period you should be asking why i am prescribed all these medications doctor what each medicine is doing for me and how long i am expected to take all these medicines and what i can expect in the coming days does it take one week two weeks three weeks how long should i wait to get a result in ayurveda you must know that it's not like ayurveda is slow all these are propagated by people who are ignorant of ayurveda you must be knowing that the results will start from the first day of administration of medicine when you are taking for inflammation within one or two hours itself inflammation will start subsiding 
so it is not like too much time consuming ayurveda is not good for acute diseases there is a project in sbba hasta lamba which is free of cost open to any person with viral fever not only viral fever any infective fever in any part of the world they can avail the service uh, hasta lamba i'll share the link of that you can just register in our site but you have to follow strictly by the our coordinators are there physician coordinators volunteers they are doing selfless service they are attending you no matter your oxygen saturation poor you are having pain you are having difficulty in breathing whatever it is they are working 24 by 7 for you without expecting anything it is a selfless free service they are not charging from you so this why we are doing this we are doing this for the last two years and more we are doing this first to prove that the scientificity of ayurveda the potential of ayurveda the efficiency of ayurveda is not what the world thinks now now india the whole india is distorted by perverted knowledge on ayurveda you think that ayurveda is immune boosting ayurveda is taking chavan prash ayurveda is taking uh, what you call wellness therapies all these things and what not this is all ayurveda tea ayurveda recently one of my students shared with me ayurveda pan also i was shocked to see all this whenever you see such stupid things you should tell them don't do this these are all illegal things means distorting the true identity of a medical system should be legally punishable offense it is a legally punishable offense because it is distorting distorting the identity of the real science this is why people are suffering by taking ayurveda medications liver problems are happening how liver problems are happening liver problem is happening because of mismanagement you may be taking some medications herbal medications which you consider as ayurveda and see abortion also to induce abortion many young girls they are going for some uh, unqualified people they are buying medication all these are very dangerous Ill it is very dangerous to help sometimes conception might have happened in fallopian tube and this is taken so much of danger it can go to end up in fatality also so leave everything to a scientific practitioner of your whoever you are consulting and leave to his or her decisions that is very important and coming to sexual health uh, this um, what do you call sexually transmitted diseases even though in india it is less it is happening in a certain portion uh, a very high community of women uh, owing to several reasons and uh, yes uh, human papilloma virus hpv nowadays vaccine is also there and government is making it mandate not mandatory but still government is encouraging hpv vaccine but hpv vaccine has got so many complications and it is not necessary for a, in my personal opinion it is not necessary for a country like india which has got high culture and moral values we are having we are far different from united states of america still indian girls are uh, raised with very good consciousness of culture and values so i don't think many girls and women will uh, engage in sex in 13 to 15 or 17 or 18 years perhaps after that for several miserable reasons they are forced to apart from that but still it is not a general thing we cannot generalize it so this vaccine also in 2010 when it was introduced in uh, i think one state andhra pradesh I, i if my memory is correct eight girls died eight girls in a village andhra pradesh so that time uh, it was reconsidered whether it is to implement if you still look in the uh, internet google you will find the the news which i am sharing with you so eight girls died means it is not a good thing so we cannot say what will happen in the coming years to all the girls who have resorted to this procedure so it is like always every sort of artificial things have got its own problem and every sort of natural thing which is given in an abnormal manner is also having problem if you are not using even your uh, ayurveda medicines in the right way for the right period if you are using some herb erroneously you are taking tulsi every day many people are taking tulsi every day very dangerous it can cause uterine bleeding it can cause 
bleeding from nose sometimes it can cause accumulation of blood in joints tulsi is very strong similarly uh, this lavanga all these spices people are drinking in water boiled in water these are all very dangerous it can cause several problems and uh, many other conditions i think i have covered breast cancer breast cancer is a leading cause of death in women and uh, it is like hormonal dis dysfunction and metabolic dysfunction i will say that if women do pretty good sort of exercise exercise in the sense whole body movement exercise and if they drink boiled water and if they are really conscious about taking avoiding junk foods like chocolates too much of pastries cakes all these junk foods whatever it is like uh, nowadays swiggy when you order in swiggy you will get food like so many junk foods can also be ordered even though healthy options are there so all this without doing exercise if you are doing it it can cause it can cause abnormality in your functioning of your hormones and this hormonal dysfunction can either affect your uterus or affect your breast we cannot say which part it will be going to sometimes it can affect your heart or brain also so it is really important to stay health conscious and health consciousness is not eating too much fruits nuts dairy products everything but it is make sure that you are eating only when you are very hungry and you are drinking enough water boost your hunger don't eat when you are not hungry if you are not hungry still you are eating you are prone to get slow metabolism and eat and finish in such a way that you can eat a little bit more don't eat full stomach and make sure you are doing exercise twice and many of the things which you consider healthy by yourself can in inflammatory status infective status it can worsen your status for which logical reasoning is explained in the science of ayurveda okay so always sbba science based evidence based ayurveda doctors are there in some parts of india you can get their help you can get their services and make sure you are following the right way okay am i uh, did i take more time deepika ji no no you are absolutely fine if you want to carry on do carry on not a problem uh, okay so i i will just take five more minutes with your permission absolutely okay. yes yes please go I, ahead yeah what i will just read out a few points in my book sbba healthy lifestyle rules for women this is the pledge to be taken by indian woman pledge to be taken by indian woman okay so the first point is i should receive vegetarian predominant balanced wholesome diet which is madura predominant which means we are eating madura predominant diet starch containing we will eat rice more or wheat more so it is madura predominant diet with all other rasas which are the other rasas soreness is there tikta tikta means bitter taste is there astringent taste is there amla is there sour is there lavana salty taste is there so all these rasas six rasas are there this rasas should be included in a balanced diet in a balanced way that is very important part of getting balanced nutrition all the rasas have their own function if you eat too much uh, sweets kaddu rasa or spicy things will reduce like if you eat too much sweets if you are taking some pepper one pinch of pepper in your mouth that sweet property will reduce so it is like amla if you are taking too much sour things tikta things will uh, neutralize it if you are taking too curd or something immediately you have to take a piece of bitter gourd then the amla effect sour effect in the body sour taste can cause inflammation so taste can aggravate inflammation so tikta rasa tikta means bitter taste foods it will balance and lavana excess salty is balanced by astringent foods so this is how science explains balanced nutrition which is very important point two healthy food should be consumed by me by me means all indian women at the onset of appetite and in accordance to my appetite after the digestion of previously taken food very important which generally manifest as pure belching you will get pure belching your belching should be devoid of the smell of food when you are deciding to eat next point number 3 chocolates bakeries synthetic foods biscuits junk foods 
will be avoided by me as much as possible. I am educated regarding the immediate and latent health hazards of these foods and I will continue to educate my family members on this. Point four, I will restrict eating sour fruits, dry fruits, nuts, milk and curd as I am educated that they are not compatible nutrients every time and even contraindicated in my disease status. I will also restrict fish intake to once or twice a week. That too, not at night. Night, if you take fish, the bad property is more because it enhances secretory properties in the body. As I am educated that it is not a compatible food in general, fish can aggravate hormonal dysfunction, fish can cause bleeding, uterine bleeding can aggravate by fish, it can uh, stimulate allergic disorder, immune dysfunction and whatnot. So when you are really fond of fish, eat at noon and make sure that your metabolism is stimulated continuously. Point, next point is I will drink boiled water or medicated water, herb decided by SBB a doctor. You cannot decide yourself the herb. You can drink boiled, plain boiled water in accordance to my body status and seasonal variations. And point number, next point, I am made aware of SBB a practitioner that excess and scientifically incompatible nutrition would lead to obesity hormonal dysfunction, excessive tiredness, sleep, uh, sleep disorders, poor memory, concentration. You may be wondering why I'm getting poor memory. Excess sweets, excess curd can also impair memory. Allergies, cancers, vomiting, worm infestation, all these can happen by excess sweets. Regular physical activity in empty stomach should be practiced by me in accordance to my physical strength and body status. Next point, I would resort to regular management of any other disease if happening to me by following SBBA guidelines of treatment, diet and regimen under the guidance of science-based, evidence-based Ayurveda practitioner. This is very important for sustaining my overall health and immune, immune status. Point next, I will scrupulously follow the SNS, scientific nutrition schedule of SBBA at the time of my ailments and also members of other other members of my home. I would not suppress, forcefully initiate or control the natural bowel and bladder urges. Very important. And I am enlightened regarding the bad consequences of suppressing them. If you want to go to toilet, if you are suppressing it, it can cause many bad effects in your health, which are clearly mentioned and clearly explained with logical reasoning in Ayurvedic science. I keep clean sanitization and environment for my living house and maintain hygiene. This we are doing most of us. I follow scientific healthy food habits and medicine suggested by SBBA practitioners. I try to avoid daytime sleep. Very important. People who are not working at night must not sleep during daytime. It will not improve your health. It can slow down your digestion. It can slow down your metabolism unless you are really tired after some exertional activities. Do not sleep in the daytime. I refrain myself from all sort of addictions, including food addictions like pickles, puppard, fish, sweets. Some people, they cannot eat without pickle, without puppard. All these can, till 25 years, sometimes you will be okay. But from 30 years onwards, you will be regularly visiting some doctor because of several reasons it can cause impaired metabolism it can stimulate inflammation it can cause diabetes hormonal dysfunction etc instead of watching television i play and pray with other members of family and engage myself in creative hobbies i do not delay in consulting with sbb a practitioner at the onset of ailment how do you know that you feel sick you are not feeling active you feel to lie down your digestion is not normal you are not getting enough sleep, sleep disorders. Sometimes some signs will be there, excess bleeding or some other impaired fertility. You are not conceiving though you are trying. So many other issues are there. So at the beginning itself, it is advisable to take the consultation of SBB practitioner. I consider it as a sin to do sex before marriage or have multiple sex partners in life. I save myself from teenage pregnancies unwanted pregnancies, sexually transmitted diseases, 
and unwanted psychological stress by keeping morality, culture, and values of my country. I will strictly follow the advices of SBBA practitioners before, during, and after pregnancy. SBBA guidelines are there, which make sure that you are getting healthy conception, which make sure that your pregnancy is healthy, there are no problems, even if there are so many complications which can happen in pregnancy, we are taking care of that. We are having guidelines to, to make sure, suppose your uh, fluid is less, fluid is more, placenta previa is there, or placenta, I mean, IU, uh, intrauterine growth retardation, your baby is not growing as expected age. Everything, there are strategies in SBBA which can be adopted under the guidance of a SBBA practitioner. And uh, I would not take any chemical drugs or synthetic hormones unless I am guided by a practitioner of modern medicine if I am referred to modern medicine by an SBBA practitioner. Always primary healthcare is best to be adopted in SBBA. But if you are taking any kind of chemical hormonal medication, make sure you are doing under an ex under the expertise of a family doctor or a doctor who is expert in modern medicine. I practice SBBA rule of women healthcare throughout my life. By adopting this, I live a long, healthy and active life. My husband and family are also educated in this. This is my book. This book, evidence-based Ayurvedic gynecology and maternity care, devised and updated. So in this, I'm explaining all this for doctors, but this pledge is meant for every citizen of India. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramya. It was very, very informative. Um, we'll get to some questions. We have some questions from the audience. I have a few questions in my mind as well. The first question, how does one buy your book if they want to? Uh, I missed that question. How but do you? How does one buy your book? Is it available on uh, Amazon or how does one get to that? Get to your book? Am I audible? You are audible. Can you hear me? Can the audience hear me? Can someone just say yes yeah. or no? I can hear. No. Okay. Actually, how how the... to buy your book? I am just asking. How to buy your book? Where is it available? Yeah. The, if you go, I will share the link of my website sbeba.org.in. If you go visit my website, sbba.org or .in, I will share the link, I think, perhaps after the program also. Sure, sure. Yeah, you can okay. share as a comment or you can share with me and I'll put it on the page. Sure, sure. I will do that. So okay. when you visit the website, you will find publications where you can book online and the book will reach you in one or one week, mostly, maximum two weeks within in India. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay, sure. Thank you for the information. I had a, this, a question. I had a few questions, actually. I'll start with one. Yeah. So, uh, how does one identify one's Prakriti? I mean, what type that person is? Okay, so this identification of Prakriti is done by several factors. Like, it is not that important for you to self-estimate by Prakriti, but still, I will tell you, if you are, uh, like, many things are there. If you are very lean, first by your constitution, by, by your structure itself, it reveals some people, they will not put on weight. No matter how much you eat, you will not put on weight without any disease, I mean. If you are having a disease and you are not putting on weight, it is different issue. Pragrati means by birth, what is acquired in your body, that is what is called Pragrati. And Vigrati means any de deviation from Pragrati is Vigrati. So, some people are having very lean body and crackle sounds will be more in their joints and stability will be less and they will feel very tired easily. They will get exhausted easily. All these are considered many, many criteria are there. It's like just simple uh, one or two only I can tell you because it is such a long explanations are given in the book and Pitta uh, Pragrati will be having, they will be having external features of Pitta Pragrati as well as their metabolism will be naturally high and uh, they are prone to get more uh, inflammatory sort of disorders like carbuncles, ulcers, um, what do you call skin lesions, skin lesions 
allergic disorders all these are more prone to happen in pitta prakriti and kapha prakriti means they are pitta prakriti naturally they are blessed to have very good metabolism so it is easy to lose weight and gain weight for pitta prakriti individuals they can easily lose weight and they can gain weight also and kapha prakriti means they will be very slow in all their activities pitta prakriti will be very fast in doing things they will be very enthusiastic but at the same time kapha prakriti will be very slow in their activities but they are best uh, immune status will be good they have good quality immune cells and uh, their body will be very nourished body like joints will be well nourished and uh, everything like their anabolic features good anabolism will be there for kapha prakriti and stability is more for kapha prakriti generally lifespan also is most for kapha prakriti but this is general only most of the people will be having some sort of deviation by certain kind of disease diseases it's a long topic the because yeah yeah understood yeah thank you for explaining yeah. uh, since we are talking about women's health uh, so one question that i had was uh, there are several vaccines that are prescribed to women during pregnancy yeah so are those all necessary uh, what's your view on that you are uh, you are asking about vaccine a uh, vaccines given to women during their pregnancy yeah so this vaccines actually they are artificial immune immune enhancers no so definitely they contain adjuvants and they can cause significant harm to immune system definitely i think most of the vaccines uh, tt is administered i think according to the new protocol they are administering covid vaccine i'm not sure many vaccines are administered Uh, during pregnancy but it is advisable to avoid them why because it can cause immune alteration and if a mother is already having an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks her own body tissues like for example rheumatoid arthritis or type 1 diabetes or hypothyroid hashimotos hypothyroid all these conditions if a woman is having and she is receiving all these vaccines also definitely it can alter her immune status and this altered immune status can be acquired by the baby also and it is very high chance of baby getting immune system altered immune system and some kind of immune dysfunction even otherwise the first thing that a baby is consuming i don't know how many of you are thinking that the first thing that a baby newborn baby consumes is antibiotics because mother is put on antibiotics iv and through breast milk antibiotic is ingested by the baby so you can uh, you can just imagine such a tender immune system for a newborn baby that newborn baby in tender with tender most immune system is receiving such a high level of antibiotics and there are absolutely no studies to evaluate the impact of these antibiotics in newborn babies but if you are uh, having a, an sbba practitioner in your vicinity i recommend you strongly recommend you to take her or his advices medical advices from time to time avoid all these chemical drugs during pregnancy and after delivery also because wound healing can also be done by sbba guidelines very effectively we can heal the wounds even surgical wound as well as episotomy wounds it can be healed very efficiently very fastly without any antibiotics by sbba guidelines but make sure you are getting service of sbba practitioner that is important because conventional ayurveda practitioners may not be confident and if at all confident also sometimes we cannot say uh, the predictability matters okay Okay, so where are the SBBA uh, practitioners? Like, in which cities do you function right now, or is it mostly in-person service, or do you do online service as well? Online service is only for the viral fever. I mean, infective fever, any sort of infective fever, they can register in our online service. But other services, it is not possible to do treatment over online. We will not be able to get complete picture of the patient. in we uh, infective fever we are not medicating we are just providing first aid but with that first aid itself without medication we are able to bring the patient back to normalcy it is the success of science science of ayurveda accuracy of science but other diseases we have to do treatment so treatment cannot be done online many ayurveda doctors are doing 
but it is not possible originally without accessing directly. So SBBA practitioner cannot do treatment online. For knowing about the details in your locality, there is an FB page called SBBA Wisdom Series. SBBA Wisdom Series, where you can ask the question with your locality, whether any doctors are available. And we are not doing any certificate course or anything. We are conducting training programs for Ayurveda doctors for since 2015. So some dedicated doctors are there who are very much committed to this learning process and practicing SBBA strictly. So they can be approached for medical help directly. Sure, sure. Thank you. So I'll share the details on the on my FB page as well. Uh, post the talk of SBBA, uh, your FB page. So that way people who want to visit uh, and know about the practitioners, they can have a look. Sure. You can sure. Do. I'll take some questions from the audience. Uh, so Avinash Avasti is asking, is non-veg food discouraged in Ayurveda and why? Uh, actually, non-veg as such is not discouraged in Ayurveda. But the thing is that in the present condition, in the present scenario in India and the world, what, what kind of diseases mostly people are getting or people are more prone to get immune dysfunction, immune dysfunction diseases like grade one allergy, hypersensitivity, grade two autoimmunity, grade three, it can cause a disturbance or alteration in the prakriti of cells, nature of cells. It can cause uncontrolled, abnormal proliferation of cells, which is called as cancer. So such kind of diseases are there. Then second kind of disease, metabolic diseases. People are having metabolic dysfunction, diabetes, and many other things. Dyslipidemia is there, and impaired metabolism can cause obesity, hormonal dysfunction, all this is happening. So that a group of conditions are there. Number three, sedentary lifestyle. Sedentary lifestyle can cause so much of metabolic imbalance and poor circulation and improper drainage mechanisms. So these are the commonly seen conditions in the present day world. And second, people are not like before uh, eating healthy food, doing exercise, etc. People are mostly sitting with computer or mobile or something in screen, in front of screen most of the time. Their normal lifestyle itself is abnormal. So all these conditions are prevailing. So non-veg foods by nature, chicken and fish it can cause the ayurveda is perhaps the only science which explains the nature of food and nature of response of human body according to the status of human body to the particular nature of food ayurveda is only explaining that for example fish what all things fish can uh, cause in the human body in such a condition Fish can trigger hormonal dysfunction. Fish can induce secretory activities in the body. Fish can slow down metabolism. And fish can also cause immune dysfunction and allergies. All these things. So it is like, based, like that every kind of meat. The most desirable meat is mutton, goat. Because goat is always running uh, everywhere. So it is mentioned. The reason is also mentioned. So goat's metabolism itself is high. So goat's meat is considered to be healthiest meat. All other meat, even beef and all, is to be avoided always. It is not like beef should not be eaten. Nothing like that is explained in Ayurveda. But it is mentioned that beef should not be consumed every day regularly. Fish should not be consumed every day regularly. See, that is everyday matters. And in disease status. In disease status, what is to be avoided? strictly as all these foods meats heavy to digest heavy to metabolize by nature of meat itself meat as such is heavy to digest heavy to metabolize all these problems hormonal dysfunction nowadays we know chicken can cause hormonal dysfunction in girls even eggs girls who consume eggs precocious puberty is happening and so many different hormonal dysfunction even in uh, uterine bleeding cases Women do not know the impact of chicken and fish. So they are taking all this and they are undergoing hysterectomy. SPBA is preventing so much hysterectomies in India. We can do that because we are educating women 
about scientific nutrition for hormonal function according to her status and we are able to reverse such large number of cases so the it is like it is not that non veg is banned it is that what when where why how all these are explained in the science of ayurveda that is why ayurveda deserves to be called as science there are no blind instructions you do this you do that it's not like that again why how what where when everything is explained along with we have to ex, uh, apply our intelligence and common sense i mean a physician and to educate the public that's all sure that helps thank you for the explanation so avinash avasti has asked another question he's asking a friend has high bp and he's developed walnut allergy after the third dose of covid vaccine so is there a way to treat that okay so the hypertension itself raised bp is just an impact uh, an effect cause mechanism we have to explore in the patient why raised bp we are finding many cases large number of cases with sudden shoot of bp after the covid vaccine we are seeing such a large number of patients with sudden hypertension people were absolutely normal till then we are finding so many cases of liver dysfunction so many cases of heart attacks we are also seeing hormonal dysfunction abscess in the breast and vulva and many other places we are finding thyroid dysfunction newly emerged vascular malformation and so many different conditions after we are getting more number of patients after covid vaccination for a doctor it is not a good thing to get more to find more patients frankly they always want to see less patients but unfortunately nowadays we are finding many patients with multiple uh, idiopathic is called by modern medicine when they don't know the cause and hypertension is also according to them 90% of cases idiopathic primary essential primary hypertension for which cause is unknown but in sbba we have we are doing by exploring cause sometimes it can be by vaccine induced uh, immune response in this particular patient which has resulted in inflammation and hypertension whenever inflammation is there in the body a, an individual can develop raised bp it doesn't mean that the individual will be having a, be, will be a bp patient forever when inflammation is reversed bp will be normalized and it can also happen by toxin in the blood it an allergy is also developed it is not the walnut which is the problem the real problem is abnormal immune system allergy uh, people are blaming dust allergy smoke allergy uh, nut peanut all these things but they are not the real causes they are only external causes i am eating nut i am not getting allergy you are eating your i mean you are eating you are getting allergy means your immune system is not normal your allergy means abnormal response of immune system so who is to be blamed what is to be blamed it is not blaming that is required we have to rectify the altered immune system altered immune system once it gets rectified the he can also eat walnuts or whatever if possible so this is what is to be done and this is for, uh, guidelines for hypertension allergy all these are there in science based evidence based ayurveda we are doing that uh, and we are effectively managing such conditions also thank you sure thank you rashmita is asking that she has a knee pain with swelling for the last one week i think orthopedic doctor said that the gap in the joint is decreased uh, she wants to go for sbba ayurveda treatment so is that possible is that something you can take care of yeah so rashmita where where is she in india that matters she can ask in that spba wisdom series mentioning her locality any doctors are available one week joint pain started means obviously it could be by inflammation so i have given some basic guidelines to manage inflammation by self without any medication as per state in my talk you listen to that and you adopt those strategies first and then Uh, like dry heat application and some dietary modifications i have explained that you follow and still if it is not working it's not it is supposed to reverse the knee pain day by day hour by hour it has to come down by these strategies if it is not working you take a medical consultation with an sbba practitioner nearer to your vicinity 
definitely they will be able to help you come out of this uh, she is in orissa i think you might have some uh, facility or your presence there in orissa right So I was saying Rashmita is based in Orissa. So do you have uh, practitioners based out of Orissa? Yeah, we have a doctor in West Bengal only, not Orissa. Uh, Dr. Saurav is there. When you search, you will get Dr. Saurav Agarwal is there in West Bengal. OK, OK. Yeah. Uh, the next question we have is from Harjinder Singh. So Hajjidhar is asking what precautions, medicines, uh, teenagers in the age group of 15 to 17 can take during periods. Uh, so because uh, he's saying that the flow is more and it continues for uh, a long time, like 10 days. So what is the guidance in this kind of conditions? Uh, flow is more, it is common in that age group because it is the en entire menstrual cycles are controlled by hypothalamus pituitary over insel axis. So it, it takes some period for maturation of this hypothalamus pituitary ovary, that connection, it has to mature on its own. Naturally, it will happen. There is no need of any medication, but still if the girl is having uncontrollable bleeding, and uh, what you call uh, anemia, see, uncontrollable bleeding can cross reduced hemoglobin also. So tiredness, weakness can happen. In such a case, uh, first of all, SBBA consultation she can take and she can change her habits for a little bit of period, like for, a, for at least for five days. She can avoid all the non-veg foods, eat cooked vegetables, avoid fruits. Fruits as such will slow down metabolism and disturb hormones. So cooked vegetables, avoid milk and milk products. It is not like cutting off her nutrition. It is making the nutrition scientific for her. What is scientific nutrition to her disease status? We are modifying the nutrients according to her necessity of the body. So we can do that. These changes, boiled water, all these changes she can make in her diet and see if things are responding. Adequate sleep at night, too much of mobile use is there. People, uh, children are not playing at, at all. So some minimal, uh, it's not vigorous exercise during bleeding, it should not be done. But movement is required. Movement, walking or uh, some badminton like things can be done for some time. So that is required to stimulate metabolism. Everything will happen naturally. There is no need of giving some uh, hormones to stop bleeding in that age. Even it can cause adverse consequences later. So you can make the necessary lifestyle modification under the instruction of SBBA practitioner. And things will improve very fast. It's not like many days or something. Bleeding will be controlled in two to five days. And next cycle, she will be educated regarding what to adopt on from about third day before bleeding. She has to start that lifestyle. And till the bleeding stops, she has to undergo that lifestyle every month. Then things will get better and bleeding results. This is what is to be done. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Remia. Uh, another question from Abhinash Avasti is asking if goat milk is healthier than cow milk and what about donkey's milk? Actually, donkey's milk is not that uh, means uh, for all Generally, advisable milk is goat's milk itself because it is light, it is easy to digest and metabolize. Donkey's milk doesn't have that properties. Sure, thank you. Hajinda Singh is asking if there are any consultancy services uh, available in Delhi, Gurgaon. Oh, sorry. In Delhi, we don't have SBBA practitioners, but in Amritsar, we are having nearest. Amritsar, there is a doctor. If he wants to consult. Okay, sure. Uh, I had another question, and like you had mentioned about HPV earlier. So the cervical cancer. So are there any preventive measures? Um, I mean, the HPV virus. We know that it is not one of the main reasons for the cancer. They are pushing the vaccines, which is not the right thing to do. But then, um, what is the percentage of women who? Uh, get cervical cancer and is that preventive 
as per my understanding as per my knowledge in the con- conventional literature available only less than 1.6 percent or something even with hpv infection will develop cancer in india such a small percentage women that to we know that hpv viral infection does not mean cancer cancer will happen by several other progression in the pathology only cancer can and it about the whole i think 100 strains of virus only 13 one three are bound to cause cancer so that much less chance is there and sexual contact and uh, it is very le- less likely to happen in a um, in an average human society of india so the i don't understand why they are pushing vaccines in that age group uh, of i mean girls i think they have uh, now they are introduced that, they have introduced that and i think they are pushing are, for boys also boys also okay six yeah. states i think i heard like that six states of india they have introduced that's, that's right from june the campaign is supposed to start from june yeah. it can cause so many complications not like uh, when i read about the side effects i read uh, the vaccine side pain and all which means they are masking the serious um, consequences side effects and it is like it can happen in any year of their life no these children are so young no their hormones have not matured their immune system have not matured so when they are injecting this it can cause complications in any age to them so is there a study like that to understand what will happen in long run what will happen to these children in long run i have read that eight girls died during the trial period itself in 2010 in a village in andhra pradesh so which means that it can be fatal also so if a girl dies who is getting loss does government get any loss loss happens to her parents and family only this applies to any vaccine so the thing is that we must make sure that uh, the government it is actually the duty of government itself to make sure that anything which is pushed or which is pushed as a drive they should be sure that it is devoid of any sort of harm and there is no such a drug which is devoid of any sort of harm so what can be done it has to be educated what is what are the causes and consequences and how much percentage of infection i mean it's how much percentage of this virus uh, viral infection can develop cancer and what are the things which favor cancer development and what are the complications of this vaccine and if there is any limitation like after many years we don't know what will happen we have studied only up to this period if government is more transparent perhaps people will be more be helped otherwise such fatalities can continue ever okay uh, thank you for the answer Harjinder Singh is asking uh, his mother is in uh, 68 years old and complains of pain in the knees so uh, doctor has said that it is due to old age and cartilage issues so um, op- surgery has been advised uh, so should they go for surgery actually the details are to be known in like how destruction has happened generally de- destruction that is what is called osteoarthritis osteoarthritis is not developed in one day it is developed after continuous mismanagement of inflammation knee joint inflammation might have developed and after many years of anti inflammatory pain killers and other things rest for the knee joint without any exercise patient will be advised not to do stair climbing not to do walking and thereby inflammation will worsen and and finally inflammation is destroying the joint it's not like old age is destroying the joint we know old age people are there who are walking normally so it is the inflammation unresolved inflammation or mismanaged inflammation which is worsening the joint so if it is um, uh, patient has to be seen examined and the reports are to be seen to know whether in what grade inflammation uh, whether it is possible to sometimes it will be possible to make the pain reverse completely with sbba guidelines and further damage of knee joint can be prevented in many cases we have done that but it is it can be told only after seeing the patient directly and evaluating the initial response of treatment sbba guidelines in the patient 
if things are getting better within one week within one week itself patient will start feeling better pain will be reduced movement will be better so we can understand that the patient does not need surgery if there is no response things are getting worse and then we can understand that it has gone beyond the repairable phase so it can be said only after initiating examining and initiating okay sure sure understood that uh what is your uh, that was like my question that i had what is your thought on integrated medicine like how many people go for uh, combined uh, medication in terms of like they do ayurveda and allopathy together or homeopathy and allopathy together so what are your thoughts on that integrated medicine at the same time uh, using different medical system allopathy and ayurveda together is very dangerous why because as you know ayurveda is a holistic science which advocates to take care of different pathologies in the human being at the same time a person is having hormonal dysfunction metabolic dysfunction and infection ayurveda sbb advocates principles to integrate them and provide minimum medication to reverse all the pathologies so there is ayurveda as such as sbb science based evidence based it is not recommending any sort of adjustments to suppress pain some oil is advised or to like block pain mask pain nothing like that to reduce pain oil or to in, uh, reduce bp allopathy it is not like that when you are taking care of a, uh, a scientific practitioner of ayurveda if taking care of arthritis he is responsible for hypertension in the same patient he should not be asking the patient to take anti hypertensive and give something for arthritis it is unscientific treatment in ayurveda why because any drug which is given in modern medicine is not reversing the pathology but doing some sort of adjustments by no blocking masking etc so this can interfere the action of ayurvedic medicine naturally it can interfere because human body is same only no there it is applied the same system same human being we are applying two different kinds of medications so it can sort dangerous sort of abnormal undesirable impact in the body which nobody is studying no research is happening in that aspect but it is sure to happen why because one is working for suppression the other one is up. whatever medication you are taking in ayurveda it will activate your immune system so if you are on immune suppression generally body will get confused so it is not a desirable thing to integrate allopathy and ayurveda but technological integration is okay suppose the patient is having icu support ventilator support or still in icu they are not treating they are doing some sort of ad, uh, adjustments and taking the patient back to life suppose any fatal things are there at least some sort of injection or some sort of mechanical support is given and making the patient conscious and once the patient attains consciousness there is no doubt if the western medicine practitioners were allowing ayurveda in icu i mean sbaba in icu this much number of deaths will not have would not have happened in covid because infection is the cause of reduced oxygen saturation and even not only covid other things heart attack many other things which they are managing technologically in icu technological support even icu experts are telling that we are not doing any treatment we are just doing some sort of mechanical help to ensure that the patient is living and if the patient is living patient is conscious i have had experiences with a limited some limited cases who are in icu so this kind of during covid time i mean so it is possible so this technological help from modern medicine is very desirable in certain conditions where it is really required other than that there is no need of integrated medicine it is the patient's will to decide whether to go for modern medicine or to go for scientific ayurveda treatment it is patient's will to decide whether to go for treatment or deny treatment and uh, but the risk and consequences should be explained to known by him that's all this is what is explained by constitution of india also that's all. right okay thank you uh the questions are flowing in i think we'll take two more questions from me ji in the interest of time so uh, another one is from harjinder singh i saying allergy symptoms like sneezing running nose 
uh, they happen very often once a week or in 10 days and it continues for two three days after that it gets better on its uh, own so does that need a cure or is this normal it could be because just a benign immune response also sometimes it could be by an abnormal immune response if it is a benign immune response it will get rectified on its own by the strategies which i have mentioned just before like metabolism stimulation drinking boiled water waiting for good hunger then all these things which i have mentioned vegetarian predominant diet all these things will help but if it is not working definitely more uh, investigation and exploration will be required by a scientific practitioner of ayurveda sure dr ramya i think we'll take the last question now so basically with the covid uh, you know, lingering since the last two three years the discussions around covid there has been a discussion on virus as well so some critics uh, they argue that there is no such thing as a virus and this is a question from abhinash avasti so he's asking is that true that there is no virus actually the status of virus is same as virus is not there because it is a non living thing no see if it is a living thing only we need to discuss such a lot about it a virus does not have an independent life a virus can live only if your human body if your body allows it to live so that makes it very clear that it is very less important as less important as a dust particle dust particles are always there on our body different kinds of dust and uh, dust particles are there on our body why do we need to care about them if we always wash our hands and wash wash our face and wash our body every hour people will call us what it is an obsessive compulsive disorder it is not health consciousness so the point is that virus as such is a non living thing so we don't need to bother about it what is to be bothered is the immune response to the virus so naturally that also healthy person is having natural healthy immune response against all these things all the pathogens which are invading us not only virus bacteria whatever and there are so many bacteria virus fungus in our body always so our immune system is continuously working innate immune system the first immune system first defense mechanism innate immune cells they are working like soldiers to fight all these infections so the point is that virus if enters also if the innate immune system or only thing what we have to do is enable our immune system to remove it or deactivate it if our immune system permits only it can multiply if our immune system is destroying so there are certain highly specific and specialized strategies of sbba which are being adopted by in hastalamba our viral fever first aid program any infective fever we are adopting the same thing so this virus is always less important i don't think there is such a lot of energy money and resources required to discuss so much about virus we know that how much discussions are virology institute it is happening so much discussions by different scientists if they were discussing about something to eradicate poverty or eradicate <clears throat> there are many people who are suffering from uh, endless metabolic and uh, immune system disorders if something is to be developed to eradicate these diseases see if infection is not able to be reversed then it becomes a fatality the problem is not virus the problem is ignorance of the people who handle it so it can be reversed only by proper scientific wisdom ayurveda is the only science which explain host factors to eradicate infections you don't worry about virus our system is telling don't worry about virus bacteria etc you must do this immediately fever one chapter is there in ayurveda which is the highly complicated vast deep most chapter in ayurveda is fever the first chapter which we are learning in treatment is fever and it it doesn't it is not a symptom fever when we learn properly we are able to uh, handle all sort of infections we are able to handle autoimmune kind of fevers we are able to handle cancer fevers all these kinds of things we are able to manage if we are learning fever chapter so such a kind of vast science is there but owing to the ignorance of people it is not being exploited that is why we are discussing so much about virus external defense mechanism mask wearing sanitizing all these things internal things 
that defense strategies are two kinds no external and internal internal defense nobody is discussing in schools uh, people are not learning this difficulty perhaps you may be aware or not i don't know in school my son is in ninth standard he is learning about antibiotics in school what is the need of teaching antibiotics in nc uh, this their curriculum ncert syllabus what is the need of teaching antibiotics children are to be educated about the innate immune system how it finds and win infections this is what is to be taught to children that is not taught they are teaching that antibiotics kill bacteria my son asked teacher i have not taken any antibiotics i have i have uh, had so many infections i got rid of them in less than 3 days or 5 days how it happens so children are not even aware of the fact so they are cultured in such a way their intelligence is poisoned in such a way that from school itself they are learning bacteria antibiotic how dangerous it is we are not living in a foreign country we are living in india india is known to westerners for our intelligence our intelligence in physics our intelligence in mathematics our intelligence in medicine and we are not enabling this to come up and we are following blindly some other things for many years and centuries why is this happening i don't know really okay thank you this, this was a wonderful answer and we have the audience thanking you for the all the insights and the information it has been really great listening from you and learning a lot of things uh, so for those people who have not been able to attend the online live show or the video would stay on this page and uh, anybody can download and uh, dinia ji i'd probably share with you the downloaded version so you can upload on your youtube as well we'll share the links and uh, Yeah, I think hopefully this has been an informative and uh, learning session for everyone who's joined and everyone who will be listening to it later. So thank you very much for your time. I think we did have. Uh, I would have many other questions, but we'll keep it for another day. It was a on God given for me also to join you. I thank God and every who have attended with patience the entire session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oh, namaste.